Right, hello everybody. Welcome to my Rebel Week 10 match um, against Ant-Man and his his Nurgle team. Uh, the reason this is a replay analysis is because OBS crashed while I was playing, so it completely annihilated the recording of it and the stream. Um, so, yeah, it's Rebel. Neither of us can... Re well, I could, I could potentially win the league. Mathematically possible to win the league, but it's not going to happen. So really, all, all I'm playing for now, well, either of us are playing for in this game, is development and to not have our best players die. Um, <laughs> so, I blitz with Claw Mighty Blow. I mean, I've got three Claw Mighty Blow players, and he's got two Mighty Blow guys. So you would think I would have the advantage in, in the Bash War here. Um, <laughs> you would think <laughs> I was 120 TV down if I was trying to win I would have taken a wizard but I just went with the extra apple so that I had less chance of getting banged on and obviously I, I won the toss and chose to receive so um, you know I, I would expect I'll bash him here really with 3 claw mighty blow he does have the, the strength 5 with guard he's got a strength advantage um you know, strength five guard is really good as well. But if I can hit the beast of Nurgle and get a claw mighty blow hit on him, then that's gonna be good, isn't it? So he's got more block than me. But really only only one mighty block mighty blow and then the, the beast. I, I I was honestly I thought it could oh no, this was greedy as all hell, this pass, but again the, the point wasn't winning. So going for this pass to try and get them both leveled was fine. Now what he should have done there was he should have moved this this guy first. And then he could have uh, got his rotter free, couldn't he, without the push. I quite like the way he burst here, apart from he then went too far over in my opinion. And it looked like he gave up the drive this turn really. But then maybe he didn't care about the result as well, I thought. <laughs> I don't think the beast needed to go in there at all I would have just left the beast where it was probably but then he wanted to protect it from claw I guess I went for the, went for the easy claw here with, with with block as well here could have hit more valuable player into into more claw as well couldn't I, I could have stood him up blitz there into there and then there but I didn't want to risk rolling a one hitting him I mean it is the Nurgle are a pretty good fighting team the fact that you've got a GFI to block to block the warriors effectively Made a wall, a wall of chaos warriors. And then again, I thought, you know, better to make the dodge than just get hit by a block. It doesn't really achieve a lot stopping his guy from moving. When he's given me so much of the field as Nurgle. I thought he could have done something clever here, like some kind of extra chain push. Not that it really mattered, but um, he could have done some kind of something to generate an extra block there. Kills a guy. Um. <laughs> So I used the extra apo there, even though it was only a rookie go. I probably shouldn't have done, actually. I probably shouldn't have apo that, because it was only 50-50 to get him back for the match. And, uh, yeah, having a dead rookie wasn't really bad at all, since I've got 13 players total. Two are missed next game. It's only 11 for the game. But um, I probably should have saved the apo there. Since I only really care about my five developed players. <laughs> And here, all I had to do was two dice this guy with claw, pow him, and then I could have two dice the beast. So, I do use a greed reroll and 
get nothing. <laughs> Classic. Can't even one dice the beast now. <laughs> Made it worse with a greed reroll. <laughs> And that kind of that kind of stopped my progress a bit as well. Maybe I should have pushed on. I'm just hoping, hoping to get some claw hits. <laughs> Maybe he should have agreed at that, I thought. Maybe he should have done. But I mean, he was getting the extra hit. Maybe he should have agreed at this hit. Because now he's in. Uh, he's giving up a claw mighty blow hit on his. Uh, on his. Pestigore, isn't it? Probably pushing the wrong square there, but got the KO anyway, so it was alright. So that was a good that was a good claw mighty blow hit, wasn't it? So now his one of his mighty blow guys has gone. He's only had mighty blow for three turns, though it has made a kill. <laughs> but now he's down two. So you know he's actually got a, got a one man advantage moving back. That rush of blood moving forward on turn two of uh <laughs> I've since moved, since regrouped, and then I don't mind them both down there um, to stop him hitting the claw. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was okay, and lucky to stun him actually, because I guess he would have just three dice blitzed the claw. Again, I was just making that block just to protect the claw guy, you know, because a push would have been fine. Well, guy gets hit. Unbelievably survives. <laughs> and now I think turn five, I've got uh, I've got plenty of space up here. Get away from the beast is nice, isn't it? He, he did a good job of stopping me. I wanted to go down this way, but he did a good job of stopping me going down that way, I think. Probably should have moved this guy first. Rather than making this block. I could have just moved him to there and then moved him, but I didn't really know where he, I wanted him to go. Which is why I wanted to make the blitz with the claw guy first. Actually, a crucial foul appearance failure, so I, I had to re-roll it, I thought. And got a Kaz, so a great re-roll of foul appearance there. No regen, so I'm really happy with how this house gone now. We've both made a Kaz, but I've made two kills as well. I mean, I am Claw Mighty. I have got three Claw Mighty blows, so <laughs> I feel like, you know, entitled to outbash people when I've got three Claw Mighty blow, really. I've invested all of my all of my skills into our bashing people, so you know. Given some hits away here though. It was actually quite a nice blitz and a nice greed reroll as well because it did it did get two hits. <laughs> now the killed warrior, <laughs> the owl bashing not looking so strong. So ba barely outbashed him now. 
but still. <laughs> Ducky foul. <laughs> Kaz is a warrior, and now I'm being outbashed. <laughs> Classic gym. Outbashed on my own drive with three claw mighty blow against two mighty blow, and the mighty blow's been out for half of the half. <laughs> Fun times. It is trying to protect the claw. And then that dodge was to screen there to protect the claw more. Maybe I shouldn't have done it because it was it was gonna be hard for him to get there anyway. Right, he has the chance to base the ball here with with the with the beast. I believe he goes for it as well, but I don't think it was a great play because if he does base it, all that happens is he gets blitzed by Claw Mighty Blow. <laughs> well, block Claw Mighty Blow, in fact. So, I really don't think he should have tried to base, to be honest. Like, if he was basing it with, with other things, so that I couldn't have just blitzed him with block Claw Mighty Blow with a the reroll, then it would have been a lot better play. But. He rolls a one on the GFI and then <laughs> knocks himself out. <laughs> so he was obviously horribly unlucky knocking himself out. He was about 30% fail on the GFIs, but even if he got there, I just blitzed him with Claw Mighty Blow. So I didn't think it was the greatest, the greatest play ever going for that ball base. Time for a cheeky gym power too. I mean, at least I've passed a foul appearance. Oh, no, I've got the power. An actual real power. Yeah, again, just trying to keep the protect the claws and get the star player points on the guy who needed it. This was a bad blitz because he could have blitzed it into another block, couldn't he? I don't know why why he didn't. Or he could have made it three dice. Instead he just gets a two dice in the cast. <laughs> it could have been a three dice into another three dice. Oh, because he's going to make a foul. Yeah. But he could have been a three dice into another two dice into a foul anyway. So that seemed very bad to blitz from that direction. But gets a cast anyway. So, I mean, this is really horrible now, isn't it? I've taken three cars in the first half and two KOs. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was still a little bit... Uh, now, the, I would have obviously rather blitz with block, but he was too far away. Um, I would rather make a three dice without block with a reroll to try and get cars on him. And also, I would have had to make foul appearance to hit this guy. So I think this was the right player, three dicing the uh, Pestador here. But, you know, things could turn around. If his KO stayed out and mine came back, um, there was still hope here. My two stayed out, but his three stayed out. So there was a bit of hope. Yeah, my, my claws were pretty much protected the whole time. Um, apart from once. <laughs> when he got when he got KO'd by a rookie Beastman. Um, and yeah, he didn't really protect his key players. I mean, he does have regen and foul appearance. I mean, the foul appearance is actually really good on Nurgle. It really is really good, the foul appearance. And he's got block, and I don't. He's got block, and I don't, so... 
you know, he's gonna get more knockdowns. Um, on average, isn't he? But yeah, I mean, I could still get lucky here, right? He, his, his two big players could stay out, and my big player could come back. Um, so yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't totally out of it yet. Could have made that three nice. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, but then he would, couldn't have got the foul, could he? And the foul was what was most important to him. The first dirty player foul of the match. And it's a gym foul. And now, I mean, now that was great. Him getting sent off there, that was really, really great for me. Somewhat unlucky for him that he didn't make a removal. But as you can see, the beast came back. Warrior comes back, and the Pestigor, Mighty Blow, Pestigor comes back. So he gets both his Mighty Blow guys back, so I feel a little bit bad. And I think about defending here, but I think I can't protect my claw from a Blitz. <laughs> so I was going to try and defend there with a three behind, and I just thought, fuck it, I'll just give up the half. I've only got eight players to defend with. Screw it, I'll draw. I don't mind drawing is what I'm thinking here. Um, although he's only got three, six, seven, eight, nine. It's eight versus nine, it's not unwinnable. But winning doesn't matter. <laughs> this is the thing, winning this game literally doesn't matter. Keeping my core mighty blow alive does matter. So I thought, screw it. And he's still got to protect the ball a bit. I mean, I could still... Make a claw mighty blow hit when he blitz when he gets forward. See what happens with the LOS. So I wasn't totally giving up on the match yet. Um, but what's pretty hilarious is that I get a blitz now. Which would have been really good if I had decided to play properly. It wouldn't have been that good actually. I would have just made a claw mighty blow hit. Um, <laughs> but let's see what he does with his with his LOS blocks, eh? <laughs> let's see what happens here. <laughs> Kaz. Okay. Kaz without Mighty Blow. Kaz without Mighty Blow. Could have made that three dice. KO with my e blow. <laughs> so, so now, um, <laughs> you know, now I'm like, okay, I'm glad I didn't bother trying to defend. Now it's five versus eight. I would have no chance of, of you know, no chance of protecting my claws if I if I tried to defend now. So, so I was actually pretty happy that I'd I'd kind of given up the half. Even move back to make things safer. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous to say that he's got nothing. I mean, this is the kind of attrition you'd expect from a full claw pom team, isn't it? And he's just he's just did it with with just nothing. So I think I've definitely been unlucky this game. And someone in chat at this point said he'd go for the win, and I and I thought, well, I agree, yeah. Now now that I'm down to five, if he hadn't made three removals on the LOS, you know, it would be really risky for him to go for the win because I could be on ten, couldn't I? Um, but now I'm now I'm on seven at max, which uh, which is not not good. Making it very safe. I 
just run around. <laughs> Maybe I could have stood in the way, but that's the thing, it just doesn't matter. It just literally doesn't matter, does it? Win, win, lose, or draw at this point. Just playing for pride. And I don't know, I think I think claw mighty blow is more important than pride. <laughs> and yeah, I think he fully misplays here as well, by the way, because he should have made the decision this turn whether he was going for the touchdown or not. And what he should have done was he should have made the GFI this turn rather than next turn. And then he could have had lots of players to catch the uh, catch the ball if he if he rolled a double one on the GFI. Um, or if he even rolled a one, he, I guess he would have re-rolled it if he'd failed the GFI. It's on 15. So he should have made the GFI this turn, absolutely. 100% should have made the GFI this turn. When he's not hitting anybody. And he's got players to catch it if it falls. So some good defensive moves here. <laughs> Carry on running away. Guess I should have put them up against the side actually, so that you'd have had GFI with his mighty blow guy. I didn't really think about that at the time. Because I was just thinking of getting everyone in, but I should have put them tight on the sideline, because he was obviously going to go for the touchdown. Should have put them on the sideline so he would have had a GFI to hit with this guy. Didn't have people in the end zone. Should have moved those in the end zone first to catch the ball if he double won. So he, he does go for the win. Um, which is absolutely fine when I've got seven players max, isn't it, really? And they do both come back. And decides to go strong, strong LOS here, which is interesting because, to be honest, it probably helps me because now I can feel better about ignoring the LOS. <laughs> um, if he'd put three rotters on the line, I would have probably been tempted to hit them and then have nothing else. Whereas now I can completely ignore the LOS and try to, you know try to get a touchdown. I've still got three re-rolls, got five turns, seven players. A team full of agility three. It's not it's not ridiculous to expect a score here. Um put the claw mighty ball out of disturbing presence range. Um so that I can hand off the ball to him. Put this guy six squares away so he can pick it up and hand it off to him. And I'm I'm actually liking my chances a little bit here. I was moving him around, then I realised he had to go on the LOS. <laughs> Duh. But you know, I can I can run him down with a screen. Like I'm actually thinking I've got a decent chance here. Four rerolls for five turns now. Good kick for me. Can pick it up, hand it off straight away. Make the blitz first. I guess I should have moved this guy to here in case I failed the handoff is what I should have actually done but I did, just didn't know what I was going to do with him and I didn't know what I was going to hand off or not if I used the reroll and then so I, I'd used the reroll on the pickup and I think I'm definitely right to make the handoff here because I had to just go there and then <sighs> that's the thing depending on whether I'd use rerolls I was going to position differently you know like I could have put him out there and then GFI'd and stuff so there were there were there were it wasn't necessarily wrong to not move this guy first. But obviously if I hadn't moved that guy first, the ball would have been a lot safer if I failed the pit. But I mean, really, I was all in on catching the ball, running up, then one, two, three, four, five. He could have gone there. He could have gone here. Yeah. Maybe he should have just gone there anyway, yeah. Maybe he should have gone there. 
and then I would have had a screen all the way along. And yeah, so actually this guy should have gone there first. Oh well, never mind. Yeah, he that, that warrior should have gone there. He would have gone there and he would have GFI and then I would have had a full screen. But Claw Mighty Blow gets hit. Inevitable armor break. Gone. Yep, everything's easy with hindsight. And it's easier when you're watching games as well than when you're playing them. Like, you do get kind of... What's it called? Uh, like, tunnel vision and stuff while you're playing and that. Like, I couldn't have moved the other guy first because he had a GFI. And I didn't want to, you know, in the turn. But I, I think I was definitely right to go for the handoff. Because if I just moved the, the scoring threats out... Um, I couldn't have handed off them anyway because he just moved Nurgle Warriors back. <laughs> now this is <laughs> this is funny here. This uphill block. I was just thinking, how do I not get my claw guys hit by mighty blow? <laughs> Make an uphill block, Kaz. <laughs> and I think the way I can not get my guys hit by mighty blow is um, make an uphill block for a push there, and then do a four plus dodge out and hit his mighty blow with him. <laughs> <laughs> so that then the mighty blow can't hit and the beast can't hit. <laughs> so I made two cars that turn. Outrageous. <laughs> Outrageous turn. And then and then I'll block the beast as well <laughs> and power him. So like that was completely outrageous. Um But you know it was it was all a bit too late as well at this point really. If only I'd put the claw guy, move the claw guy first. Because this still doesn't really help me that much. Still down players. And you can still clear the clear the tackle zones and recover the ball. He potatoes a bit here, but you know, that's the beauty of chaos, isn't it? You've actually got agility three guys with like, you know, this, if this had been a rotter, which it would have been because he's on the LOS, right? Um, if this is a rotter, I'm, I'd be pretty fucked. But because because he's a beast man, generic, generic gun skill lino can just dodge away for two dice on a on a breakaway, can't he? So chaos are pretty good because of that. I had a couple of choices here. I could have um, I could have moved him around without dodging, and then relied on him getting away from tents, or he could have just dodged to try and pick up. But I thought I'll I'll go for the tents escape first. And made the tentacles escape, but failed the uh, failed the dodge, even with the reroll. So that really puts me in a bad spot, failing that dodge. Maybe I could have moved him around first, but then what if I fail the tentacles roll? Hmm. Don't know. I mean, it was okay blocking him and okay not standing these up because I don't want to get them hit. <laughs> but yeah, maybe I could have moved him around first. And then if I fail the tents, I fail the tents, I guess. But I mean, the last thing I want is to take more hits on Claw Mighty Blow. I, I definitely, I'm happy with not standing him up. Now he gets unlucky here with a pickup fail, but then gets lucky in that he catches it. Um, and then, at this point, I wasn't even going to hit the ball, but then I realised it was my turn 15. 
So I was like, all right, get into, get into scoring range. <laughs> Flap fat. And then, uh, you know, might as well get these in position where they can get handoffs and stuff. He went there so he could get a handoff into a, a pass into a handoff. That's why he went there. Um, and then <laughs> double GFI, fail, fail the second GFI, and then fail the foul appearance. What a bastard. What an absolute bastard. So he gets three dice here with his blitz. But I mean, he needs the pal. If he if he only gets a push, he's he's pretty much screwed, isn't he? Because he's looking at a five plus four plus dodges. So he really he did really need it. I mean, yeah, I was I was calm because I mean, it helps that the result doesn't matter. You know, like if you don't care about the results, then it's a lot easy to not be salty, is it? You know, it's it's easy to not be salty if you don't care. Like, if you play Champs Ladder and, and you're not trying to qualify, then there's no reason to be salty, is there? <laughs> Basically. Yeah, I, I didn't... I just I just really didn't care that I was losing this game. Um, so <laughs> if it had been the top division and I'd been, you know, in for a playoff spot and I was missing out on a playoff spot, I would have, I would have been salty, you know? That would have... Uh, But it ends up looking pretty fair in attrition, as he's got three cars after that ridiculous turn. You know, it looks like it looks like it's been a pretty even game, and the dice at the end look even as well on the chart. But it did feel like I'd been really unlucky. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't happy about. I wasn't happy. I I was still unhappy to have lost. I would rather win than lose, even when the result isn't so important. This is a classic gym turn here, by the way. Push. Skull. <laughs> Reroll. Push. <laughs> into. Into both down. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean he did have more blocks so you know he's he is going to get more more knockdowns and stuff so I didn't think it was going to be an easy match by any means uh, but getting the getting the MVP on a warrior actually makes it a good result for me to be honest um, yeah and the, the dice rolls look, look really fair I mean, I only failed two foul appearances, but one was the one that <laughs> let me hit the ball carrier in the last turn. Um, and, yeah, the dodges weren't great. The GFIs weren't great, but not bad. Pickups weren't bad. Catches weren't really bad or anything. The block dice were actually good, 15, 22, 26. Um, his block dice, 21, 24, 22, were pretty pretty average and his GFIs were fine like nothing was really okay it's really stupid to really good and his pickups were bad if anything so um yeah it was like the dice looks look fair the stats look fair four cars to four cars you know <laughs> 29 blocks each the stats look totally even but um it did feel like it did feel like a dicing um but ultimately three level ups is all that matters, you know, no one died and got three level ups, so it's actually a great result. Um, Gadi Kron is like a Kaz and an MVP away, or two touchdowns. Mr. Thrive, I guess, has got to go for the touchdown. I don't even know what to take on these three level ups. Um, I'm going to have to really think hard about what, what to give these level ups here. Um, but yeah, I like, I like how these two are quite close to levels. He's not even anywhere near close, which is a shame, but there you go. And obviously Mr. Throws of course. I think they'll probably both go block guard. So I'll have two block guard warriors and two killer warriors. And then two killer beast men. And maybe this could just be guard or something, I don't know. But it's good having 13 men, isn't it? And uh pretty pretty very healthy. And um yeah, six zero four isn't a bad record for rookie chaos. It just feels bad because I was six zero two and then I've lost the last two. Um <laughs> 
<laughs> so there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.